Life is a quest. For some, it is a quest for beauty, goodness, and truth. For others, uh, it is a quest for love, peace, and harmony. And because it is a quest, no matter what our quest is, we have questions. We're quite capable of asking very profound and deeply personal and provocative questions. And questions come in all shapes and sizes. There are seemingly questions that make no sense. A small child may ask, Daddy, why is the sky blue? And most adults know that not everything is as it seems. So as we see into uh, the invisible realm, we look for things uh, we question, things that we don't normally see. We're not in the habit of looking for things that we don't normally see. For example, uh, we are, who are blessed with normal vision have three cone cells, red, green, and blue. And we see many miraculous things, many inspiring things, many beautiful things with those cone cells. But a butterfly has five and sees a million more colors than we do. And a mantis shrimp has 12. What are they seeing that we don't? Imagine what they see that we don't. Looking into those things, we ask even more questions. We ask deeper questions. We can look into the mathematical realm. We have things hidden in plain sight. We can ask ourselves, what do these have in common? They're small little words, yes? Always love, be trusting, keenly know. Start small. They may sound like sage pieces of advice. But they're also hidden in the way that they're mathematically related. When we look at the alphabet, where A is 1 and Z is 26, and all things being equal, if we reverse it, where A is 26 and Z is 1, then we find phrases that are equal to each other, backwards and forwards. Uh, love is 54. You can see on, on both sides of the equation that they total the same thing. And then we get into uh, phrases, for example, that are bigger and that are also equal. Uh, for example, we're more than just one plus one. Phrases like, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now, if you were to come across that phrase in normal language, uh, you would probably not notice that it's mathematically related as such. But it's there, it's hidden. It's hidden in plain sight. Now, we can also use a 90-degree rotational uh, use of the alphabet and color coding to envision what any phrase looks like. This one here says, think about spiritual things. Now, if we add an E or another word to think about spiritual things, such as uh, think about spiritual things every day, and we take the first letter of each word, then that would spell the word taste. And we have an acronym. Uh, now, the neat thing is about rotating these things, they stay the same because they're symmetrical. And so this one here is things of eternal value. Now, for example, things that live beyond us, if we leave a legacy, hopefully a legacy of love and of compassion, uh, then that will far live beyond us. And you'll notice the color coding is different. Uh, cells that have intersected more than a second or third time have changed color, so it becomes more colorful. And I was looking for phrases that um, have this kind of extra color coding to see that if words that we use have more weight, you know, we have a surface conversation like how's the weather, or something's more deeply personal, does it have uh, different color coding to it? And for me, something like this would have more value. This one here, stop here, is deepest longings ever heart. Now, if you turn quietly to your neighbor without saying anything and look at them just to see into their heart and ask, can I see the deepest longing of their heart? That's a brilliant thought. I was in Mexico sitting on a beach 
and a wave came up and I looked at it and I saw a large prime number across the surface of that wave. I envisioned things mathematically. And like, much like uh, quantum physics, things being broken down into elements, I envisioned prime numbers also falling into, into pieces. In other words, uh, the big prime number would be the parent. And the elements would be the children. And then bearing the same nature, their prime numbers, and they too would have smaller as they get uh, on the system. And further down the line, they too would have smaller prime numbers eventually just like having children of your own. And then the big prime number becomes a grandparent. So what would that look like? It may look something like this. John Lennon wrote the song called Imagine. And in that uh, song, one of the lines of the lyric was, nothing to kill or die for. And so you'll see that all of these are prime numbers. And the grand one that would be on the surface of the wave at the top is the one that you see at the bottom. And if you stretch them out all sideways as that wave is breaking, they're all broken down into each of these prime numbers. This here is another uh, love without measure. I like to think that somewhere in the world, there are people like you and me who are quite capable of something such as this, to be able to have the capacity to love without measure. And it's a daily process. Eyeing the invisible. We don't normally look into it, but there you have it. If you were to check any one of these, you'll see that every one of them is a prime number, and they all concatenate to form the grand prime number. And this is just another way of bringing what is hidden into plain sight. So to see into the invisible realm, what is needed? Well, the first thing is to suspend our preconceived ideas. You know, we have filters that we create. We would be totally bombarded if we did not have some filters. Some are necessary. But there are others that we've inherited, biases, prejudices, things that uh, we have not checked out for ourselves that we know to be true. So if we take the initiative to suspend those preconceived notions, we are more open to receiving and learning from others the value that they have to contribute to our lives. Cleaning our filters. You know, we live in a beautiful place, Chilliwack. We're completely surrounded by mountains. And yet, many people go about their busy day not taking in the majesty and the beauty of these mountains. They are busy in the moment not taking in any of this. So to clean our filters is also to check and make sure that we have a deeper clarity on what it is that we're trying to see. The use of creative imagination. When we have creative imagination, we open our lives to new possibilities, to greater things. Now, John Lennon, as I referred to, wrote the song Imagine, and he, his words still beg us to imagine a world where there's nothing to kill or die for, no, no need for hunger, no need for greed, all of these things. And creative imagination is the one thing that can open us up to endless possibilities. It's the one thing that we all have the ability to tap into, but not everybody chooses to. For example, I imagine a world one day, and I may be a dreamer like John Lennon in that song Imagine, but I care to dream and imagine that we can live in a world that is filled with love and peace and harmony. Who knows what that will take? Um, I haven't seen it yet. Maybe it's hidden in the in invisible and it's just waiting to happen. Believe in possibilities. The Celtic author and poet John O'Donohue said it's the unseen life that dreams us. Imagine that the unseen life that dreams us. We need to believe in the possibility that there are such things that can be made manifest simply by looking for what is hidden. And for example, now we may become present to an absence. We, that by that I mean that we can look into where something is needed and we can 
uh, take a hold of that need and with the gifts, the abilities, the skills that we have, meet that need and address it. We want to seize opportunities. Seizing opportunities, just like rainbows, the rare chance of a sighting, they're there and they're not. They're there and they're gone. But the truth is, seeing into the invisible realm, actually, rainbows are there all the time. You just have to believe that they're always there. And so are possibilities, and so are opportunities. But do we capitalize on the opportunities? This is where we can make a difference. And we can make an intentional difference. We need to observe intentionally on noticing. We have to be very intent on these things. And so this is a, an overview of all the things that are needed to see into the invisible realm. I believe we're all connected. We have, uh, as an organic body of humanity, we are each a cell in the body of humanity. And we are all connected. So here is a vast webs of connectedness. The benefits are to celebrate uh, the differences. I believe that differences are to be celebrated and cherished, not to be used as things of division. Deeper appreciation of all people, a heightened awareness, and to see others as they shall one day become, not only as they are now. This is the moral of the story. That totals 243 backwards and forwards. This way you can see it graphically. And this way you can see it as prime numbers. The moral of the story is that I believe it's the highest and best of humanity that aligns itself with all the things that love is. So the moral of the story is love is the answer. Thank you.